All right, I'm working on the controller again, and today I focused on getting the logic to show the battery voltage and whether or not the battery is charging um, all figured out and, and getting all the circuitry integrated so I could do that. And it turns out to be pretty tricky, um, so I'll kind of show some of the, the details of what I had to do. Uh, so first of all, um, you can see that right now I've got a I've got another menu here. So if I I got the water pump here, and then I've got the battery voltage, and then I've got the contrast setting. And I've got the uh, sleep time set to be a really, really long duration, so this, uh, this won't turn off on us. Um, so this will just stay up for right now. So right now, um, you can see I've got the multimeter here hooked up, and it's just measuring the battery voltage. And then this is also measuring the battery voltage, and they're pretty close, you know, it's 4.21 and... This one's kind of jumping around, so pretty pretty doggone accurate, so that's kind of cool. And I've got the uh, USB cable plugged in here to the charger, and it shows up as charging. And if I unplug it, then it doesn't say it's charging anymore. So that's working uh, really nicely. So uh, what I had to do to make, make all the, this possible was set up a couple of voltage divider circuits and use the analog inputs on the microcontroller. I needed to use the voltage divider inputs because it turns out that you cannot use, you cannot measure voltages above the operating voltage of your microcontroller um, due to uh, an issue where you would have, you potentially could have voltage flowing the wrong way through the microcontroller and burning things out. And they say that um, you can do it up, up to the VCC level of the microcontroller plus like 0.5 volts because there's a like a there's a clamping diode they, that uh, they talk about inside of the microcontroller that causes a voltage drop. But if you exceed VCC plus 0.5, which would be about um, you know 3.3 plus 0.5 would be 3.8 volts. If you exceed that, then you could get that issue and potentially burn something out. And lithium polymer batteries go up to about 4.2 when they're fully charged. So I could not just directly hook up the voltage uh, from the battery to one of the analog inputs. I needed to create a divider. And I started looking online to see, you know, you know how to how to do this measurement because I actually didn't even know any of this. I just tried to measure the the voltage directly. And think, thankfully, I didn't burn out anything. But I was getting very weird readings, and it wasn't working correctly. And during my research, I discovered the fact that you're not supposed to do that. Um, uh, but then um, came across the voltage divider solution, and then uh, they talked about how voltage dividers using just resistors uh, will actually uh, cause current to flow, and you will be wasting your battery power, which is always a concern. So I found this really um, great article on a website called uh, G Labs here, and it's called Measuring the Battery Without Draining It. And this article uh, goes through some examples of some very simple circuits on, that um, don't involve anything complicated like a MOSFET or, or anything like that. It just uses resistors and a capacitor and by using very high resistance resistors in the 10 mega ohm range, you can actually uh, cause a current of only 0.3 microamps at 6 volts. So that's so so little that it's not really a concern for my situation here. So um, the uh, the trick is that when you use 10 mega ohm resistors. There isn't enough um, current flowing for the microcontroller to get a good voltage reading. And the solution that this, uh, the author came up here with is to put a very small capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, across the lower resistor used for the voltage divider. And that, that stores up enough uh, current, I guess, um, so that when the analog to digital converter takes the reading on the pen, uh, the, it's able to provide that current and give it the voltage that, um, that is sitting there and it gets a very nice accurate voltage reading and he showed he showed how everything um, 
was very smooth and accurate and, and it worked out well. So this was a really, a really great article and um, this guy's got a ton of great stuff on his website and I think I might be able to spend months reading it. <laughs> so much there. But uh, anyway, um, by using that technique, you can see I've got these um, very high resistance resistors in the voltage divider and I've got the little capacitor here. I'm able to do that and um, not drain the battery too much. Now I actually don't even have any 10 mega ohm resistors. These are one mega ohm resistors, but I ordered some. So um, I don't actually I don't and I don't have my circuitry set up so I can even measure battery um, the ma the battery uh, draw right now. But um, I got the idea here, and when my 10 mega ohm ones come in, I'll be able to just replace these right off the bat, and it, it'll I won't have to change the the logic in the program or anything like that. So anyways, that is all about analog reading and um, interfacing with, uh, with these higher voltage, um, higher voltages than what the microcontroller is running at. So th this one again is to measure the voltage of the battery pack. And then this one over here, it measures a pin that, determ that says um, if the charger here is actually charging or not. And this pin, what, what the charger does is it sets it uh, low when it's charging, and then it sets the pin to high impedance when it's not charging. And high impedance just means that the pin is neither high nor low. It's, it's basically just a pin just out in the air. And so you could actually do some, some tricky stuff like hook up another pin to that particular pin, and then you could set your, your pin high and then then read have another pen that can read this pen and see if it's high and then you would set your pen low and then read this pen and see if it's low and then you could determine hey it's actually high impedance um, so you could do that to detect if it's high impedance or not but what I did because I didn't really care about detecting that was I put a little 10k resistor on that pen to pull it up to high when it's um, in its high impedance state so I just turned it into either being high or low, and then I read that with this green line that's coming here to the voltage divider and then going over here to the microcontroller with the yellow line here. So I just get the high and low. And, and then the, uh, the data sheet, let's see here, here's the, um, the data sheet for the charger. You can see that um, this is the one that I've got here. When it's shut down or there's no battery present, it goes to this high impedance state, this uh, status output pin. And then when it's doing charging, it's set to low. And then when it's finished charging, it's set to high. So you actually get three states on the one pin. But I didn't really care about the you know detecting these states and all the rigmarole to do that. So I just made it so mine either goes high or low, and, and that's it. So that's kind of cool. It's uh, it looks like it's working pretty well now, and I've got the um, the part that goes over by the water pump hooked up, and I've, I've got the um, relay here. And if I if I come over here and uh, turn the water pump on, then it uh, it lights up that little LED right there still. And then I've got the relay. I just have, res I'm showing resistance on that, so if I toggle it on and off, it just shows that it's doing something. I have yet to actually hook this relay up to any AC circuits and see if it works or not, but it is doing something, so that's good. So, um, and I think that, I think that is about it. Oh, I've got the, um, the update of this screen happening uh, once every 10 seconds. So um, that just happens in the background right now, and it it uh, just resyncs the time in case uh, this like if this thing falls asleep after 20 seconds and it wakes up, it'll just resync the time, and then every 10 seconds it just resyncs just to uh, to make sure it's all good. And like if I come over here and I if I turn this guy off, um, this in 10 seconds, okay, already it just showed it tried to do an update on it and it said, oh, I can't I can't talk to the the water pump. No no communications on radio ID number two. So I'll go and I'll switch it back on and it'll wake back up and then, then it does have communication with it and it's off because I, I flicked that off. And I can go and turn it back on again. And so I've got a little bit of air handling in there now and 
it's working really good. So, um, I think I'm, gosh, I think I might be done. I might be done with all the circuitry. Um, oh, you know, I still got to get these 10 mega ohm resistors. And then I do need to go and revisit the battery draw uh, because I did discover a fatal flaw in my battery draw uh, measurements. I was measuring it on this line over here. And I should have been measuring it directly from the the battery itself. So I was actually bypassing all the draw that this display is using. That's why my, my draw was so much better than it was before. So um, it is not nearly as low as what I was saying it was last time. <laughs> so I got to revisit that. Uh, but after I got to wait, I got to wait for these, uh, these 10 mega ohm resistors to come in. But uh, there we go. A lot of progress.